morning, everyone. Good morning. Hey, so this um, we're super excited to have everybody on the bus. They were actually fairly on time, which is yeah, everybody is. You guys are going on a wine tour. Good morning. Woo! That's better. If you guys are ever in the store and you see Steve and you want to try some wine and there's no wine tasting, ask him. We have wine. We have it open. We're going to taste it anytime you want. So Marquette, Myrtle, Cab Sav, Cab Franc, Frontenac Noir. Um, very easy drinking red wine. It's considered uh, quite light compared to the Cab Merlot. So if you like the full body dry, this is going to be probably your choice over this. But it's nice and easy drinking. Goes well with anything off the grill. You can even have it with some um, braised lamb or some seared pork. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> so it's a lighter red. Yeah, yeah. Can you try that upstairs? Um, we don't have our release in the box. So you're going to have to but you won't be, you won't be disappointed. Blueberry fruit wine. It's made with 100% Rico blueberries. The owners of Monty Creek Ranch Winery actually grow blueberries at the Lower Mainland. Supply some blueberries. This is a really nice. Actually, got a cooktop. Oh. And a dishwasher. Driving down here? Oh, yeah. Hit now we can see all the wineries and we go back to Pamela's. Hmm. You're cold? Yeah, I mean, it's cold. So, uh, John and I um, are the owners. My husband, John, and I'm Deb. And Hello. This is Alyssa. She's our tasting room manager. And you can compare some of yeah. back and forth. Hey, Alyssa, hi. This is Norm. <laughs> so we'll head on into the main room. Yeah. So John and I started this uh, not this past March, but the March before. So we were, um, this was, uh, we had lots of Christmas trees in this area. Mm -hmm. So it, most of these are, would be a perennial, are it the impatience perennial? Uh, this is an impatience uh, annual. <laughs> annual, but yeah. So they go in every year, but it looks like everything else. Everything else is pretty much. Uh, Those are beautiful, Aileana. Yeah. Uh -huh. the, Just go through the process of what we start after winter in say March, we do our pruning in March. Uh, we'll prune all these vines, all the new growth of this year, we prune right back to the old wood. There's, um, the wood goes up and along here and we leave one or two buds on. And then once you hit September, we start measuring our sugar levels. Our, your acids are high, your sugar's low. And then as the acid drops, the sugar is climbing up. We'll pick them when it's in balance. And usually it's when the sugar level is what we call uh, bricks. Uh, between 22 and 24 bricks is a good number to start with here. Uh, I've got a little instrument that measures bricks here. And all it is is a glass prism. And uh, who wants to come and do the measurement? And... 
Okay. I'm just going to squeeze some juice on that lens. Okay. This looks like something from Doctor Who. Yeah. And then I'll just close the slide. Right. And look through the scope. Oh, really? And tell me what number it's at. And then it would be a blue and, and clear color. Well, it seems to be between, it seems to be almost on the 23, almost exactly. 23 bricks. So we're yeah. getting very close to picking this. There's a wine authority that controls the okay. rules. Just... In Canada, they made a broad rule yep. across Canada. There we go. In Quebec, they would cut all the grapes and just let them hang in. Actually, the you can see it better through this. And then when we got to minus nine, they would, they would just pick all the grapes out of the net really fast. That's awesome. That's actually really, really sharp. Said, Can't do it oh, okay. It's gotta be, uh, the juice is actually red, whereas most grapes like our Pinot Noir. Thank you very much. Um, Merlot and all that, the, the juice inside of those oh. are clear. A little bit about uh, Chardonnay. I'll just finish up. We press. We've got juice in the tank. Say I've got that big tank full, and what we'll do is uh, we'll let it settle for a couple of days, just the juice. And then I'll wrap it to another tank, and that heavy pulp will stay on the bottom. We'll move to the next tank. I'll add a yeast, and at that time of year, our temperatures around here might be 12 degrees, so the juice might be around 12 degrees. I can add the yeast, it will start working. And of course, when yeast works, it builds heat. And with the white wine, we want, we want to taste more of those fruit flavors. So we don't let the temperature get above 15 degrees Celsius. So I have cooling units on those tanks. There's jackets around them, and we run this glycol fluid, just like a radiator, and keep it chilled at that temperature so it holds it. Guys from France, yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, that was exciting. Taste yeah. all our wine. Yeah, it would be interesting and, uh, for them. Yeah, they visit so many wineries, yeah. you can pull a ton of information on, no. on making cool. different styles of wine. Neat. They're really good people to have around That's because really they see so much <laughs> of the industry. <laughs> Ideas or guesses of what it's called? It is a siphon, but it's a wine thief. They call it oh, wine thief. Yeah. <laughs> wine thief. Yeah. People started thumbs down to Chardonnay, and uh, what happened is they were poking it in, in California, and people were hating it. And, and they were using new oak. It was just dominant to the wine, and uh, everyone. North America just shuddered when he said Chardonnay, who won? And then someone started producing an onion Chardonnay, and that's more acid, more crisp. It's, it's a totally different wine. Yeah. And then um, the Californians and, and people in BC, they kind of clued in. You can't use new barrels. You can use maybe 20%, 30% new barrels, but you've got to have some neutrals so the oak does not dominate the white wine. And now in North America, Chardonnay is the most consumed white wine. It's come back. But you're right, it was. They knew right yeah. away they were just buying the grapes. <laughs> Thank right? you. I mean, there was farmers three years ago who could not sell their grapes. Mm -hmm. Too oversupply. Oh. Now you can't find a grape. Wow. It, it's, they're all gone. Hey, this was on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's the other bus. We're here first.
Well, you're welcome to dunk. You're going to be welcome to, if you want, if you're spitting, I'll get you your own bucket so you don't have to share a spit bucket. It's up to you guys. Um, <laughs> But the key to sabering is to have a nice blunt edge, a really cool bottle, and then you want to find the seam on the bottle. And then you're going to hold it out of back behind that line. <laughs> you're going to hold the bottle at a 45 degree angle, and you're going to run the blade up, and you're going to bang in the neck. So let's just hope this goes first try. just by feeling, there it is, right there. Yeah, so the seam's right there. And then you just run the edge, the blunt edge, up, and it's fast, it's one motion. Do we all get to try one? Yeah. <laughs> Not at 35 bucks a bottle. <laughs> it smells amazing. Let's see if it... Uh...
Okay, so basically what's happened is they, the Prince George Citizen newspaper yeah. and uh, Save on Foods came together yes. to put together a program that um, showcases the wines that are being carried in the wines of BC section right. in right. Spruce Land and Save on Foods, nice. right? So, um, and then, so with Poplar Grove, because uh -huh. we ended up with a, a little bit of extra time in our in our program, so I reached out to uh, see if, because Poplar Grove is carried in Save on yes. Foods, if... Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's it. It's just like it's a showcase of, yeah. of the wines that. So it's save on kind of supporting the brands inside. Right. Yeah. Nothing is showing up on the app right now. Okay. We're switching vintages. Okay. So. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, this time of year, typically you'll see in the fall, around Thanksgiving, you'll start to see the next vintages for red in the 50s. Right. That's nice, eh? And that one is uh, the Pinot Gris. Yeah. I still see if there's something wrong with my taste buds this weekend. Yeah. Township of Langley, not the city of Langley. Oh. Thirteen townships are properties in the seven. That's awesome. Okay. Opened up there in 2001. Opened up this location in 2004. We make most of the wine up here, except for our bubbly program. We based out of Langley, as it's similar latitude and climate to Champagne. Oh. So it is our anniversary weekend, so we do have some extra treats open. Cool. Ooh. So what do you call this? The this uh, what we're starting today is our fool's gold riesling. Oh, actually, hold it over here. Don't mess this up. Okay. So hold the logo. Okay. Okay. But I was expecting like 50 people at first, and then 30, yeah. and yeah. now 16. 16. Yeah, yeah. So I had sent her an email, but I love it. Well, we can drink as much as 50. Yeah, so yeah. that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. that was the about. idea behind it. Nice. We're each drinking for three. Do you want, where do you want to sit? Here or? I'm just going to check in with Jacqueline and let her know that we're. Yeah. Here on Golden Mile Bench that we're celebrating 50 years. 
years. Wow. So this vineyard was planted in 1968 by an Italian varietal, and we're only one of five wineries at the, at the time in all of the Okanagan Valley. Oh. It wasn't called Hester Creek then, it was called Davino Wines, and he's an old Italian guy, and he went to Italy and brought back cuttings from Italy of the vinifera. Vinifera is a, a type of vine that now grows here in the Okanagan Valley. Then it did not, it was called hybrid. And hybrid is your Concord grape, your baby duck. Okay, get, you get me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so it wasn't very good wines at that time. Wine. Yeah, exactly. And so um, that was because of the style of grape that was growing here. And the wineries at that time thought that was the only kind that could grow here in Canada. And it was Joe that went to Italy and Europe and brought back all these cuttings. And he started the Vinifera Fan Club, where now all of the Okanagan has got the Vinifera. So Vinifera is a, uni a, a European, as I say, varietal vine. So all our vines here are vinifera, even though they're different varieties. So this is the Pinot Blanc that he planted in block four, which is now called Old Vines, and because it's 50 years old, and in block nine. So block four is at the top of the mountain. Block nine is down um, at the end of the bench. They taste totally different, even though they're all the same vineyard. <clears throat> block four up in the mountain tastes more like um, lemon. No. Oh. Block nine tastes more like baked apple. So we blend the two, and we have this beautiful Pinot Blanc. So we won both for this Pinot Blanc in the Alcanian Alcani Wine Awards last year, just to give you an example of how nice. nice it is. <laughs> yeah, so this is a really nice one. So is anybody familiar with what the Golden Mile Bench is? It's a terroir, it's a Pacific um, sub-region, isn't it? Yes, it's a sub-region, yes. Good, good. I wouldn't know that because I wrote an article on you guys like three weeks ago, so I did my research. <laughs> Cheers. 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 <clears throat> yeah, so this is the history of where you are. Golden Mile Bench is an appellation, it's a sub geographical indication, is another word we could call it. What we did is seven years ago, the winemakers and the wineries on the bench here got together and had an independent study done and created uh, and registered it as an appellation. So, what's an appellation? An appellation is based on three things. So, we're the only appellation here in the Okanagan Valley in all of BC. So, an appellation is based on elevation, climate, and soil. Those three elements must be the same for a period of distance or time where we are, and uh, they have to be consistent. So for 20 kilometers, this bench has those three elements. So along the 20 kilometers, there's vineyards that are down below the bench, they're off the bench, right? Mm -hmm. Bench is 1,400 square feet, uh, sorry, 1,400 feet sea level. <coughs> so up too high, then you're above the bench, you're off the bench. So it's a very specific area, and our soil is uh, very high in minerals, so it makes our wines nice and dry, a real nice stone fruit. I call it like a wet stone, you know, that smell of wet stone you get when it starts to rain. Mm -hmm. That nice mineral taste to them. So Hester Creek has really a high mineral in their wines, and if you like wine Hester Creek, you tend to like them all because of that. Mm -hmm. This is something very common. So, and uh, and the elevation, and the climate, they're saying the climate here is very different on this side of the valley than it is on the east side. The east side, they get sun all day long. We have this mountain rate that we're on, and once the sun gets behind it, our vines get to rest in the afternoon. So they get a little bit of shade in the hot summer. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, those poor guys on the other side, they get the heating sun. Their wines are a bit jammier because they have too much sun compared to mm -hmm. us. So we are very different in that location, and we're very unique, I'd say, more than anything else. So that this is the Pinot Blanc that's been growing mm -hmm. here. Next is going to be Character White. Now, Character White showcases two varietals that we grow here on the bench. So to say we're on the bench, it says Golden Mile Bench on the label. Oh, two reds, and then probably two reds. Yeah, two reds. Make sure to keep those pesties up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the judge. Yeah. Okay. Before we do the judge, we're going to do another judge. So what I'm going to do, this is an experiment for you guys to learn what happens and why we age wine and barrel. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Right to the left. They've got the beautiful slabs. Yeah. Thank you. Right here. Well, honest to goodness. I could just sit there and yeah. It just sounds like my brother just actually cut down. My brother just picked up a big goose. Okay, are we talking about um, yeah. her? What do you guys think of the Pinot Grigio? Well, 
I don't know. It's sold at Save On Foods. Yeah. It's well, sold at Save On Foods. Exclusively. Guess at what? Save On Foods. Save on. Yeah. Guess what? It's on sale this week for $16.99. Yes. And we don't even have it here. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, it's it's sold exclusively at Save On Foods. We were, we were looking at different ways to have, like, to make it be sort of a bigger, better experience. And we talked about going to swim pool and all that kind of stuff. So this is what they're doing. Rather than us going into, like, sort of a, a meeting room at Ankeny, they're actually lighting the cauldron for us. Kismet should be in our our own right. Okay, so here's the thing, because we're all, we've all been at wineries, we've all been at wineries all day, we've had a little woozy woozy, and we all get into like chatting in our little uh, cubicles and all that kind of stuff, and, and we get a little loud too, because I think there's a lot of loud people here. You think? Yes, it's crazy. Oh, ready. we were born ready. There we go. <laughs> well, I was. <laughs> this is this your family's winery here? Yes. Yeah. Wow. And how long have you been here? I guess it's my third year. Okay. Are your family's third year or yours? I actually, it's my winery. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> from Vianney and Grapes, which is uh, all from Vianney, uh, uh, but the different vintage has a different flavor and taste. Like tall yummy uh, is very light and easy, refreshing, crispy finish on it. So we can start from here. Please. And if anybody uh, don't like too dry, they can tell me because this is a dry wine. Mm -hmm. uh, yummy. And yummy means a twin together pair. In okay. our yummy, we use a 2012 Vionia mainly, but then 10% 15 added to it. Yeah. Yeah. We Wait, that was part of our... Yeah, it's all part of ours. Wow. This door can lock behind you. So we have an outdoor picnic area. We have our own barbecue. We have an outdoor tub. We have our bedroom. The inside area, the kitchen. Actually I can move picture my cute 
pretty it's like, warm. It is ridiculous. Not bad. So, you guys are coming down, yeah? No, you gotta come. Come on down. Oh, is it? Okay. Which this, like, this is the last one you have to do. What's that? Oh. They're like, the last one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which one? Moon cushion. Which one's the one with those comic book things on them? Okay. Ink to me. Yeah. Ink. Um, look at, look at, this is Inkameen. Yeah, well, no, in -kameen. <laughs> there is, there is Inkameen, but there is, yeah, there is, yeah, yeah, in -kameen. Yes. Oh, yeah, so, what? So, that's what we saw, yeah. you had the sign, yeah. I was yeah. like, that's what he did. Yeah, well, it, the literal translation yeah. is, is the bottom line, it's just like, as you're driving through, you come through Vassal Lake, uh, and Gallagher's Lake there, and there's a great big rock outcropping called McIntyre's Bluff, okay. um, the, Indigenous name for it, or the, the local name for it, is Nine Linton. And what does that mean? Really, it, it translates to the rock face, is what it, the literal translation, but it's more referring as you're looking at it, it looks like uh, the face of a human. So, oh. and that's why it's, you know, so it's one of those things that that's sort of what it's referencing, but the literal translation is rock face. So, For you is our winemaker oh. series Pinot Blanc. Oh, oh, I so, the winemaker series Pinot okay. Blanc is uh, an unoaked white wine. Uh, so, these grapes will come from all over. Uh, it's slightly chilled in the summer, and my parents for wow. this one would be um, just to grill some mushrooms and then put it on some kiwi or a body oh, cheese and a cracker. So, the smokiness. Yeah. Not bad for those Pinot Noir. Not bad for those Pinot Noir. I swear to God, though, I, yeah. she, I to the pairings have been outstanding yeah. from you. Yeah. 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 So, I have to admit, I've been to a winery where they haven't done a food pairing, and it's like You're they missing. haven't completed yeah. a sentence. Like, yeah. you just go, I need an association. I want to know, yeah. know what. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and yeah, like, the. the it's okay while you're all right. No, I just say the, the wonderful thing with wine, though, is that wonderful suggestions, and it's, it's always great to have those ideas, but I always say experiment. Oh, you know, okay. it's one yeah. of those things that, yeah. uh, you know. Awesome. 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 Awesome.